Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Kushbu and in this video, we are going to see the question maximum value at a given index in a bounded array. So let's go through the question. You are given three positive integers, n, index and maxim. And you want to construct an array nums, which is zero indexed, which satisfies the following condition. There are few condition given to us that we need to satisfy and form an array. What are we going to return is we are going to return nums of index of the constructed array. So now what are the conditions that we have? One of the things is n that we are given in the question is the length of the array. Secondly, we are given a condition wherein we see what all numbers can be there in that array. So the numbers that are present in an array can be positive integers less than n. Now, one thing that I want to clarify over here is that the question states it will have zero, but according to the test cases that are given in the question, zero is not permissible. So we are going to take into consideration that our numbers can range between one to n minus one. I hope this is clear. Now let's move on to the third condition, which is the difference between any two consecutive integers in the array is going to be either zero or one, which means you can have a maximum difference of one between two consecutive integers in the array. Fourth condition states that the sum of all the elements in the array should not exceed maxim, which is the third parameter that is given to us in the question. Finally, fifth condition states what we need to do with the index that is given to us. We need to maximize the number that is present at the index. And finally, return that maximized number. So let's go through the first example quickly. Over here, we are given n equal to 4, which means our array is of length 4. Index that we need to maximize is 2. The maximum sum that can be formed with that array is 6. Now, the output over here is 2. Why? We are given with an explanation as well. So, the numbers array will be 1, 2, 2, 1 or it can also be 1, 1, 2, 1 wherein the second index is maximized to 2 while satisfying the conditions which is the sum of the array should be less than or equal to 6. It also states that there is no array that satisfy all the condition and have nums of 2 equal to 3. If we try to put 3 over here then at least one of the condition is not met and so we cannot give that answer. So the answer over here is 2. We will see the examples in more detail in our explanation. So let's go and see how we can solve this particular question. Let's take the example 1 wherein we were given n equal to 4, index equal to 2 and maxim equal to 6. So what we are going to do is we are going to maximize the number present in this particular index while limiting the sum of all the elements to 6 and also that we are going to have elements from 1 to n. So initially what we are doing over here is filling the array with 1s. This is the least number that we can fill our array with. Now after filling this, we'll get a sum of 4. So we still have a scope of improvement because maxim is greater. So let's try and maximize this. Once we make it 2, our sum becomes 5 and it still satisfies the condition that the adjacent elements must have a absolute difference of 0 or 1. Let's again try to maximize this element that is to increase this particular value. Now when we increase this value, we also need to increase the other elements as well. That is we need to make this as 2 and we need to make this as 2 because we need the absolute difference as 1 or 0. But as soon as we do this, the sum becomes 8. This is not satisfying the condition of maxim. 
that we had. So that's the reason we need to go with the answer as 2 and that's the output that was shown in the first example given to us in the question itself. So now how are we going to achieve this answer? For that let's take a bigger example and let's see how we are increasing the number and how the rest of the array behaves. So over here we are taking a array of length 6 and at the position 2, we are trying to increase the number, that is maximizing the number. Now, notice that when this is 2, all the other elements can be 1. When this is 3, the element just next to it also increases by 1. When this is 4, the element from this 0 to index 4 are getting changed. And when we increase this to 5, all the elements are getting updated. So what is happening over here is we are having the maximum number of elements in the left we can go, maximum number of elements at right we can go and at a particular time when we are increasing this element the effect or the ripple effect also goes to some elements in left and some elements in right. So when we were over here, what we see is, let's see here the left and right are 0 and this is increased by 1. Left and right also increases by 1 and this also gets increased by 1. In the next iteration, this left and right index got spread by 1 more while I increased this element by 1. And similarly, this happened over here as well. Now, this was the boundary. That is left was having a boundary. So left couldn't go beyond this. But we had a scope to stretch in the right in this case. So as soon as we try to increase the index at which we are given, we also need to increase the elements in the vicinity as well. And that ripple effect goes on till my absolute difference is greater than 1. So now we also need to code it in this way. So let's see. A dry run of how we can solve this using this particular scenario. For that let's understand one of these things. So over here there are different variables present. This is the index. This is the maximum we can go to left. This is the maximum that we can go to right. And while increasing our particular index value we are going to take into consideration some left and some right. So Firstly, let's see what max left and max right is. Max left is the number of elements in the left, which is nothing but equivalent to the index. Max right is n minus index minus 1, which is n is 6 minus this index 2 and minus 1, which is 3 elements in the right. Now let's solve the question. We take n is 6, index is 1 and maxim that we can achieve is 10. So over here we have index 1. In the start we'll take the left and right that we are going to increment as 0. We are just going to increment this one first. So what happens over here is initially the sum was 6 because we have filled the array with 1s. Now we are trying to increment this while having left and right as 0. So what we are trying to do is we are not incrementing anything in the left, anything in the right, just the center piece. So that gives us this particular array. And now the current sum will become as 6 plus this 1 that we have incremented. So that becomes 7. Let's go further. Now when we are trying to increase this, we will also have the ripple effect to the elements in left and right. So my left will increase by 1 and right will increase by 1. And this left and right will only go till my max left and my max right. So now my current sum. What is my current sum? It is equivalent to the previous current sum plus number of elements I have incremented in left which is 1 and number of elements that I have incremented in right which is also equal to 1 and the 1 that I have increased for the center element or the index. So that is equivalent to 7 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is giving me an answer of 10 and this becomes my array. 
Now let's go forward and try to maximize this further as well. Once we try to do this, our left and right also increases. Now my left cannot increase because it is the maximum left. Right, we can go till 4 but we haven't reached 4 so we can increment this. So what happens over here is it takes the previous sum, it takes the left, it takes the right which is 2 and it increases the center index as well. And the current sum with this becomes 14 which breaks the condition of max sum and so this cannot happen and my array formed with this particular condition or this particular center index is not valid which means we need to take the previous one as our answer. So 3 is going to be the answer in this case. So this is the basic approach or the brute force approach where we are trying to fill the array with ones and trying to increase in a step manner. What is the time complexity over here? The time complexity will go up to the steps that we are taking in order to fill this or optimize this particular index. Since my bounds of the questions are too high, this particular approach will give me a time limit exceeded. Now how do we optimize this? Before that, I highly recommend you to go ahead and try to code this brute force approach out and submit it so that you get a TLE and then come back here to see how you can optimize it. Now let's see how we can optimize this particular approach. For this, we need to pay attention to how the working is. For that, let's consider this example further. We increased our maxim to 30 and now let's continue this. So over here, the current sum is 14 and we can still go ahead. So with this array, we are going ahead. So we are increasing our boundary of right and reaching its limit. And we are getting the current sum as 25. We have the last sum that was 19 plus this 1 in the left, 4 in the right and center index 1. This gives us 25. Next iteration, what will happen? We are going to take this current sum and we are going to add the same number of values because my left and my right has the same number of elements that are getting added. So what is happening over here is the increments that I am going to do in left and the right part is going to remain the same for all the iterations from now on because my right and left has reached its bounds. So current sum plus equal to this portion remains same. And so instead of looping over it, I can break it down and I can use the division operation over here for the remaining maxim that I want to fill in. For example, if this were 50, I would have done, I would have stopped over here and I would have taken 25 by 5, which is 5 more iterations wherein I can increase this sum. So, in this case, what we are effectively doing is till we have right and left bounds, that is till n, we are going to go in a stepwise manner, but as soon as we reach that particular point, we are breaking it and we are applying a mathematical formula to reach the answer in one single step. So we are effectively decreasing our time complexity to O of n rather than O of step. So let's go and code this particular approach out and see how that looks. Okay, so let's start with initializing a few variables. We'll take a result which is 1. And this result means that I have utilized my maxim by filling the array with ones. So my maxim now becomes maxim minus n. With this I have a left which is 0 and right which is also 0. And I also have a max left which is equal to index as we saw in the example and my max right which is equals to n minus index minus 1. After we are done with this, we are going to take a while loop 
stating that while my maximum is greater than 0, I am going to perform some actions. First action is maximizing my index value, which is result plus plus. Next thing that I am going to do is calculate my left and right values that I am going to increment. So left val is minimum of left and max left. With this, in every iteration, my left is going to increase. And same is going to happen with right as well. Now that we are done with this, we are going to update the maxim as well. So maxim is going to become maxim minus the elements that we have used which is 1 plus left val plus right val wherein 1 is for incrementing this left val is incrementing the numbers in left right val is incrementing the numbers in right with this I am also going to see whether I have reached my condition wherein I can optimize the solution that is I have reached the bounds of left and right If my left val and right val have reached my maximum left and maximum right, I can simply break from this loop. Now, once I am breaking from this loop and if still my maximum is not exhausted, I need to add something in my result. What I am going to add is result equal to result plus maximum by n. Finally, we are going to return. So now, while returning, I will check if my maxim is gone below 0, which means I have taken one more element into my result. So I need to reduce this while I am returning it, else return the result as it is. That's it. It's giving perfect result. Let's try and submit it. And it got submitted. So over here, the time complexity is going to be the number of elements till which I am going in my left and right maximum, which is going to be equal to n. And my space complexity over here is O of 1 because I am just using a few variables to keep my values intact. Now, can we solve this question in a better way? The answer is yes. There is a better way to solve this question, which is by applying binary search. If you want to learn how to solve this question by binary search, follow the link over here and it will lead you to the explanation to the binary search video for this particular problem. I hope you like the solution and if you did, please do like, share and subscribe to our channel. And thank you for watching the video. I will see you in the binary search explanation. Till then, keep learning, keep coding.